Hello, how are you doing, Professor Garrett? Um, this is Logan, Logan Richardson, um, here in your uh, Kin 400 class. Um, so this is my final for week eight, um, and it's going to be on a targeted population of high school baseball players from the ages of 13 to 18 years old. Um, so I'm going to tell you why I chose maybe this demographic to uh, study. Um, I chose it just because I've been playing baseball for the uh, since I was three, um, and it's been a very just big part of my life. Um, and I feel like I know the demographic well from 13 to 18, um, just being f in part of different teams, um, coaches, having lots of different um, teammates, um, and just being involved in it as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start, and I'm going to talk about um, how the physical environment, social environment, and family uh, culture can influence you in areas like motivation, stress, anxiety, um, and the need for feedback as an individual athlete. Um, so physical environment has a lot to do with motivation. Um, you, I submitted a, a paper a while back, um, and you talked to me how a field, the equipment, the school, the atmosphere um, in general just has a toll on the athlete as a, um, physically. Um, and I could really relate to that seeing how like if you go out onto the field and you have a whole bunch of potholes or the mound isn't clean um, and there's just holes everywhere, like that motivation of an athlete is going to go down. Like you're not going to want to play. You're not going to want to be involved. Um, as well as just like if the school just has a bad rep with the team, um, just the atmosphere is very negative. It could really kill the physical environment um, um, and just motivation overall. Um, you could lose motivation easily from the physical um, parts of the game that way, and it just it wouldn't it wouldn't work well. Um, so the definition of uh, motivation in a book um, and that I found out through online too is uh, motivation is the foundation um, all athletic effort and accomplishment. Without your desire and determination to improve your uh, sports performance, all of the other mental factors, confidence, intensity, focus, and emotions are meaningless. Um, there's also two different um, kinds of motivation that I'm going to talk about that were in the lecture in PowerPoints. Um, there was intrinsic motivation, um, and that's more like personal. It's more doing it for yourself. Um, it's rewarding. You do it because you like it. Um, you enjoy it. Um, as well as there is also the intrinsic side, um, and you want it. You do enjoy it too, but it's more for competing. You want a reward. You're getting something out of it. Um, maybe. Uh, a trophy, um, good grade, that kind of thing. Um, on the other hand, motivation is is easily seen through social environment and family culture as well. Um, maybe even more dependent on uh, the physical environment as well. Um, so motivation can seen through like your family and all that. Um, your families obviously can give you motivation, um, and as well as social environment, your friends they have a big impact on you um, as an individual. Um, Social motivation comes from peers, peoples um, you surround yourself with, your community. Um, they're always there to pick you up when you are feeling down. That's what I loved about my family is that every time I had a bad game or they, just, they could tell that I was out of it, they would always be there to pick me up as well as my teammates. And that has to do with being on a good team as well. Um, at the same time, there could be a form of external motivation that could be a negative influence on you. Um, so for instance, like if the dad played football, um, so this would be more like family culture. If like the dad played football and his dad played football and you kind of feel forced into playing football, that motivation isn't necessarily going to be good for him. If he doesn't want to, you might end up being pulled into it and playing it for a certain amount of time. Um, so yeah, in the end, it's important to have positive motivation reinforcement. That's also talked about in lecture. Um, being able to get rewarded and have emotional support is just super um, influential and just crucial um, in motivation in general. All right, so next I'm going to go ahead and talk about how stress can um, influence you in physical, social, and family environments as well. Um, so the definition of stress. Stress is the state in which is seen in response to internal and external stressors. Stress brings mental and physical disturbances in living beings. Stress may eliminate, sorry, excuse me, uh, emulate itself as either physical um, or mental stress. So as an athlete, there's you don't want stress. It's not good, um, especially while you're playing. 
it's not good to have. Um, it's going to get inside your head. You're going to be worried about other things. Like if you have, if you're stressing out about like a test the next week or the next day, that's not going to be helpful. You kind of got to put it aside, leave everything in the dugout, outside the field. Um, too much stress and arousal in a game can cause decrease in your performance as well. Um, there's actually backed up uh, stats on that as well. Like if you're stressed, you're not going to perform well. Um, families can give you reasons why you shouldn't be playing sports, which can give you stress. Um, this wasn't so much for me, maybe in football. Um, I didn't really play football, but my mom didn't want me to play football because she didn't want me to get injured. So if your family is bugging you and nagging you because they don't want you to play that sport because they don't want you to be injured, get injured, get hurt, um, or maybe some parents are as strict as, look, you got to do good in school, you don't have time for sports, or you don't have time in general. Um, they're just kind of being unfair for you while you're on a team or while you're even trying to play sports. That can give you stress as well, and you might not want to um, play in general. Um, so I have a quote from uh, Danielle Braff, um, and I'll include the uh, citations down at the end um, in my PowerPoint or my uh, just my kind of outline. But um, this is what she said. She says, "As but as the states grow, um, the children are ones losing. The children are the ones losing, according to stats. Seventy percent of children drop out of sports by the age of thirteen, and the big reason is that their parents are putting too much pressure on them." Um, he explained. Um, Parents are putting in all the money and time, he said, and that they think that if they put all in, um, they'll see a light at the end of the tunnel in form of college um, scholarship. There's no balance between encouraging a child's athletic abilities and stressing him or her out by becoming a second coach. Um, my dad personally stepped out of the picture because I would get mad at him for trying to coach me, and so that ended up working well. I would just listen to my coaches. Um, but lots of families do try to get involved to try to get them to get scholarship and it just it can kind of turn into a mess if it's not done correctly that's why he said there's kind of like that balance between um that you really gotta kind of be careful for um so next we're going to talk about um anxiety and how that could um be seen in social physical and family environment and it definitely goes hand in hand with anxiety as well um so the definition of anxiety um is a multi-system response to perceived threat or a danger um, it reflects a combination of biomechanical me change, changes in the body, um, the patient's um, personal history and memory, and social situation. Um, so anxiety can really hinder your health um, in general. It could just, um, I deal with a lot with anxiety um, as well, and I'll get to that later. But um, it could also deal with your performance, um, which is not good. The key to performance uh, anxieties is to disarm the fire alarms, to regulate your emotional thermostat. Um, that was seen um, in some text. And um, that's really crucial just to kind of pinpoint what you're dealing with and kind of try to turn it down, try to regulate it as much as possible. Um, and I have a quote from uh, Christy uh, Pickywicks. Um, in this state of focus readiness, you could know the difference between what is inside, what is inside you, outside you and what has already happened versus what may occur so it's kind of like an encouragement in a way like you already know like what's inside you and what you have to deal with and it's I and outside you so it's like don't really focus on it and kind of try to figure out the differences between um and try to stay ready um anxiety is fixed by controlling um your emotions from the start um and really finding the bigger picture um trying to solve what is really is it this girl, is it school, is it family, like trying to pinpoint what it is and trying to really solve it and maybe talk through with it just to get that out there and it feels better when you talk um, about things. Um, so I kind of deal with a little bit of uh, anxiety my senior year of high school. I ended up losing 20 pounds um, and it decreased my fastball um, by like six miles per hour so that was one of the reasons why I registered my freshman year um, here at CBU. Um, I just got really discouraged and it wasn't good and so anxiety um, has definitely improved over my life just because I pinpointed the reason is just because I was stressed about all these different schools I was trying to go to for baseball and stress is not a good thing and it definitely requires you to talk um, to someone about it um, and it can definitely help you. Um, so next we're going to be talking about the need for feedback and how crucial that is as an individual um, dealing with um, you know, these situations maybe in high school that a uh, 13 to 18 year old could be dealing with. Um, 
and just talking in general, just kind of how I mentioned about how they need to talk about things and get feedback from others about maybe anxiety they're having. So the definition we're going to use for need for feedback is information about um, reactions to a product, a person's performance of tasks, etc., um, used for a basis of improvement, for improvement. Um, feedback is something you need as an athlete. You can't get better without feedback. Um, that's why there's coaches. Um, that's why there's people to help you. Like when I would go for pitching lessons and I would throw a couple of pitches or whatever, I would have a guy on the side that was giving me feedback and what the do's and don'ts or goods and bads that I should be doing. Um, whether they're coming from your coaches, your family, your peers, it's always good to listen to feedback. Um, receiving, receiving feedback is really hard, don't get me wrong. Um, whether if it's good feedback, then get better, work on the good feedback. If it's bad feedback, like it could frustrate you, but now you know what to work on and there's goods and bads um, and there's a good outcome for it all. Um, so this quote came from Alex Lickerman, um, MD. Uh, Don't react to the initial sting of negative feedback. It will fade. And until it does, it's hard to make good use of what you have heard. Sometimes the best initial response upon hearing negative feedback is silence. So just, I love that quote just because it's kind of like, Sometimes we're super quick to speak, on um, a slow to listen. I think this is good just because we really need to sit there and kind of soak up what we've been told and really focus, okay, maybe I do need to lift my leg higher. Or maybe I do need to hold the ball different. Um, or just little things. Maybe you're not going to be comfortable with it at first, so you're going to throw off what they said. But really to this think in silence and then work on it later can really help you with need for feedback. Um, so next, we're going to go ahead and um, go into another topic. We're going to talk about just goals. Um, and there's three different goals we're going to be talking about that are extremely important. There's outcome goal, performance goals, and process goals. Um, we'll get to those definitions in a little. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and kind of wrap up, like, maybe how we should deal with some goals. Um, we should set specific goals, um, set moderately difficult but realistic goals. We don't want to go above and beyond to where... There's no way we're like, we can't be the best baseball player. I mean, you can, obviously, that's a goal maybe to some people, but how realistic it is, um, just it needs to make sense. Um, set a long and short-term goals. We're going to be talking about that in a little. Um, set performance and process goals as well as outcome goals. Set practice and competition goals um, and record your goals and your findings. Um, so first, we're going to talk about outcome goals. So an outcome goal focuses on... Um, Competitive results of an event, um, for instance, like beating someone. So for our um, demographics of uh, high school age baseball players, always hyped when they win. Um, so our first outcome goal is going to be sweeping the big rivals. That was my favorite thing to do in high school ball um, was to sweep the big rivals. So our, um, our strategy for that would be to continually practicing our dynamics as a team, game situations, preparing for the team, maybe scouting the other team and seeing what their weaknesses are and how we can capitalize on that. This would be short term um, just because when you sweep someone or when you're playing your rival, it's only within a three to four day games, um, game streak or whatever. It's not going to be long term. Um, so our long term goal, which is our second outcome goal, is going to be reaching CIF playoffs. Um, which is throughout the uh, course of the season, which is considered long term. Um, going into each game, we're going to uh, strategize that going into each game one at a time. We don't want to worry about um, and get anxious about the other um, games. We're going to take one game at a time. Um, I had many coaches tell me that. Um, team meetings to work on team dynamics as well, practices um, on team bonding. Um, so like team dinners before um, or after the games, um, just uh, homeworks, uh, homework time, just getting really to know your team, um, which is awesome. Um, and the book also talks about do not focus all your attention on the outcome of the goal. Um, so therefore, like, one game at a time. Um, and getting to know the team dynamics, team bonding, um, has to do with maybe those um, those people that we'll have on the team, kind of like the comedian or like the team captain that we talked about earlier. Um, and those, those individuals can really shape our team as well and can really get us to those points. Um, so our next goal is going to be the performance goals. Um, so performance goals focusing on achieving standards and performances um, or objects independently. So just us. Um, so like the first performance goal would be um, individually, um, a whole as a team, I guess, would be um, to be air-free for three games. 
Um, so this would be short term because it is three games. The strategy we would do is to um, just have lots of repetition. Um, ground balls, fly balls, pitches, swing in the bat. Obviously there's not really any errors in offense, but defense, there'd be lots of repetition um, to get us going through the motions um, and kind of visualizing, maybe some visualization as well. Um, to really set the pace for um, trying to be air free um, for three games. Um, so our long term would be um, for a high school uh, baseball player um, to lower his uh, ERA um, from let's say like 4.2 to 2.2 or whatever, um, lowering that. Um, like again, the strategy would be to um, just be very just have lots of repetition, um, throwing lots of pitches. You're going to want to be throwing long toss, working on bands. Um, every day it's going to be really hard um, to stay with it. Um, so you're just going to have to work hard um, and get through that. Um, improving game situations as well um, and location, having someone stand in for you, um, just really getting you ready for that. Um, so next um, goal we're going to be talking about is the, um, the process goals um, and what these are. Um, so focusing on uh, actions an individual must engage in during performance to execute or perform well. Um, so our first process goal for um, the high school players would be to increase the, velocities, um, the velocity of a pitcher. Um, this would be considered at least long term. Um, for me, I had to do this as well my junior and senior year. Um, and I had a whole calendar layout that I used. Um, and so our strategy would be to simply strengthen the arm speed and the arm and the muscles around it. So we'd be using bands every day before we throw. We'd be working on long toss, flat grounds, bullpens, um, a certain amount of throws, using towel drills and different weighted balls to get your, uh, your arm stronger through the motion. Um, and that overall would be a good strategy for, um, or even something that we could do as a team or for um, a whole team just to strengthen their arm. Um, and that could also be different outcome goals and all that kind of stuff. Um, so our second process goal would be um, the pop time of a catcher to be improved. Um, so having a pitcher continuously throw pitches to the catcher to get his throw down to second perfect or at a pop time to where he needs to be um, would be our strategy. Um, working on fast twitch muscles in the weight room, improving um, the precision of his pop and just getting that flowing well from like whether it's a ball of dirt or if it's um, high or wherever um, the catcher is getting the ball. Um, so I also have a quote and it's um, you could also you can have all the potential in the world but without focus um, focusing on your abilities and talents are useless. So just kind of summing um, just the goal section up all together. Um, the, three pro the three goals, outcome goals, performance goals, process goals. Um, so you could have all the potential, and without focusing your abilities on the potential um, that you could have, it's just your talents are useless if you don't have that drive and those goals. Um, so yeah, um, that's it for uh, my presentation for the final for uh, week eight. Um, I'm going to include two documents. I'm going to include the PowerPoint that I made, um, as well as kind of like a final week eight, like rough draft, um, what I've kind of been looking through right now when I'm doing the presentation. Um, so I just want to say thank you for uh, being a teacher for uh, CBU um, and giving us some knowledge on just uh, behavioral and sport. Um, and thank you so much uh, for your time. Mm -hmm. and